I don't know how to do fraud. I was fighting a case for conspiracy to commit wire fraud and identity theft. I ain't never did fraud a day in my life. I don't even know how to work my phone. I don't know how to work a computer. Yo, face. Yo, your face, please. With sugar on top. Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, make sure you check us out on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash hookah anonymous underscore. You guys have been telling us to create one for the longest, so we recently created a community where we will upload videos that we can't share on YouTube due to their guidelines, but we'll also be dropping the latest to their first behind the scenes information that you wouldn't find anywhere else on our socials. So make sure you become a member. And after you do that, head over to our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore and follow us there. Now, without further ado, let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, it looks like G Herbo can't catch a break, y'all. And every time we turn around, his name is being caught up in something. If it isn't relationship drama or him being called out for messing with Funny Marco, or the fraud case where he was accused of using other people's credit cards to fund a lavish lifestyle, either way, it's gonna be something. Now, speaking of the fraud case, G Herbo finally breaks his silence and spoke on the situation for the first time ever after it has came out that he is now being sued by the same law firm he hired to represent him in the same case. How ironic is that? G Herbo took to his Instagram account to release a video explaining what went down and cleared up a few rumors, also while addressing the law firm and why he's being sued by them now. Now, for y'all that are unaware about the lawsuit and everything going on, back in 2020, G Herbo, along with five others, were indicted on one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and two counts of aggravated identity theft, according to the federal prosecutor. G Herbo was accused of using stolen credit card information to pay for private jets luxury vehicles, and design of puppies, according to a federal court file. Heard made the situation even worse when he was questioned by federal prosecutors back in 2018 about a rap promoter within the case, telling them that he never worked with or assisted him in any way, shape, or form. Herb also told the prosecutors he never gave the promoter any money, received anything of value from him, and never had direct relationship with the promoter. However, upon investigation, prosecutors would find out that not only did Herbo did in fact have a relationship with the promoter, he did provide money and receive services from the promoter, including private jet charters, luxury accommodations, and exotic car rentals. He also directly contacted the promoter through phone conversations, text messages, and Instagram DMs. Now, I think that's where G Herbo messed up and got himself involved in the case. I don't know why he thought it was a smart idea to lie to the feds, because if you know anything about the feds, if they're doing an investigation, best believe whatever they want to know, they're going to find out. So if you lie, all you're doing is making it worse on yourself. And I feel the fact that he lied made it seem like he knew what was going on, even if he didn't, and would give prosecutors enough leverage to include him in whatever charges the indictment held. Now, had Herbo said he did receive services and gave money to the promoter, but he didn't know what was going on behind the scenes, he was just giving money for an exchange of a service that the promoter told him he can do, then I don't think he would have been at fault. But once you lie to federal officials, it's pretty much downhill from there. Now, according to the plea agreement, Herbo was facing 20 years off the conspiracy conviction alone, although it still had potential to be reduced. Fast forward to 2023, he would plead guilty, but in January of 2024, G Herbo avoided jail time and was sentenced to three years probation. Now, on top of that, G Herbo was ordered to pay restitution and forfeiture of $139,968 each, as well as a $5,500 fine. The fines are on top of the $140,000 he agreed to forfeit, the amount he benefited from what prosecutors have said was a $1.5 million scheme. We thought that would be the end of that case, but I guess we were sadly mistaken. Because just a few days ago, G Herbo was hit with a lawsuit from the same attorneys he hired to represent him in that very case we just spoke about. According to reports, Herb is being accused of shorting Boston law firm Prince LaBelle Tie LLP out of $238,000 for representing him in that fraud case. The suit filed in Suffolk Superior Court 
alleges that G. Herbo breached his fee agreement after Prince LaBelle provided extensive legal services in his defense against federal fraud charges. Now, Prince LaBelle claims it provided a vigorous defense led by white collar co-chair James Lawson, which ultimately helped secure Herbo's lighter sentence. The firm's lawsuit states that G. Herbo agreed to pay $685 per hour for partner Walter B. Prince and $570 per hour for Lawson services, plus additional costs for the defense. Herb also paid an initial $80,000 retainer, and for their services, the law firm is stating that they weren't compensated for helping Herb dodge jail time in exchange for just probation. Now we're going to get into the video of G. Herbo explaining what's going on and why he's being sued. And firsthand, let me tell y'all this. If you don't know anything about lawyers, good. <laughs> right? You don't ever want to be in a position where you need one in the first place. But then two, I always say that lawyers are some of the biggest scammers. At least some of them. They make up their own prices and usually it's based off who you are and your finances. Never really about the case. Now, truth be told, some of these lawyers already know the outcome of your case due to the relationships some of them have within the small circle of law, but it's based on what you, the defendant, can pay. This is why certain lawyers you always see being retained by certain entertainers because they have the right relationships with the right people as long as you got the right money to pay. They can make sure you get off a good deal in your situation, and this is why they are paid the big bucks. And in this situation, $80,000 just for the retainer fee alone is pretty extensive. I can't lie. Anyway, let's check out what G Herbo had to say about the lawsuit. We're going to talk about it after. Check this out. So instead of like writing one of those big, long paragraphs where people issue statements, I figure I'd rather just talk about it on video. And I wish I didn't even have to address this kind of stuff because I don't know if I could avoid talking about stuff publicly or if I could avoid any kind of public perception of my personal life and my business, I would do the opposite. But anyway, I want to address this lawsuit and my greedy, shiesty ass law firm, Prince Lobo, that I hired. First of all, I paid y'all a million dollars, a million dollars. I think a little over a million dollars, but this this invoice of what y'all was suing me for put y'all well over a million dollars, and I didn't even go to trial. I pled guilty. I pled guilty to something I had minor or little involvement in in the first place, and I only had my name on five pages of discovery, so. Out of the million or whatever pages of discovery that y'all read, because that's what y'all wanted to do, so y'all could charge me by the hour. My name was only on five pages of only on five pages of discovery. I went into the courtroom pleading guilty, and I was able to walk home, walk out of the courtroom, and be with my family, remain free based off of mitigation. And for those who don't know what mitigation is, mitigation is basically a, a argument based upon who I am as a person, the community work and the stuff that I do in the community and who I am as a man, as a father, the mental health work that I do in the community. I didn't catch a case and start doing that. I was doing this before I caught the case. So basically I went into the courtroom and was able to walk home free based off who I am as a person. My lawyers ain't even really do. You know how to like when people catch cases and they beat the case and they take pictures with their lawyer like, oh, thank you. I didn't have to do that because I pled guilty to the I have to go to trial and my argument was who I am as a person and the likeliness that that'll never happen again, first of all. And second of all, let me touch on, I'm glad this so I can speak on it. I don't know how to do fraud. I was fighting a case for conspiracy to commit wire fraud and identity theft. I ain't never did fraud a day in my life. I don't even know how to work my phone. I don't know how to work a computer. I went to jail for paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to do for goods and services. When I was 18 years old, I was a kid. I was 18, 19 years old. 20,000 for a jet, 15,000 for a crib, thousands of dollars for cars, rental cars, and he doing shit illegally. That ain't had nothing to do with me. I didn't know what the f was doing. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was a kid. I had money already. I wasn't going to steal from people. I wasn't stealing people's credit cards and taking their identity to go further my career or do something to help me. Like, 
be for real. So, anyways, let's touch back on this subject. Also, y'all misinformed me that I would even be debanked, that I was gonna get debanked, and banks wouldn't even allow my business anymore after I fought this case. So on top of that, I had to get big ass checks sent back to me and then figure out which bank gonna take me so I could put the money that I already have in the bank and I can't even make no new money. I got millions of dollars in deals on the table right now that I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the checks that I have already and where they gonna send these new wires because y'all misinformed me that I would be, that I would lose business and be deep bank behind me. So not only did y'all overcharge me, y'all misinformed me, y'all misrepresented me, and y'all took advantage of me. And y'all think just because I'm young and black and successful and I'm an artist that I'm uneducated. Like, I don't know right from wrong. I should have never paid a million dollars to y'all in the first place. Everybody on my team advised me to sue y'all for excessive billing, but I never did that. So now y'all suing me because y'all greedy and money hungry and y'all feel like I owe y'all 230000 which I don't feel like I owe y'all. But if y'all would have reached out to my team before issuing this public lawsuit, we could have, we would have paid y'all. We would have got to the bottom of it. And my team would have informed y'all that y'all didn't tell me that I would be debanked. So now I got to figure out where to put all my money. Where to put my money and where to receive my new money to even pay y'all in the first place. That's crazy to me. But I just wanted to speak about it publicly because people get the wrong message and they get you know what I'm saying? Shit will go through loopholes and people will look like, oh yeah, I, I, I stole or I'm in the wrong. I honestly am not in the wrong. Y'all misinformed me, y'all misrepresented me, y'all took advantage of me. I paid y'all a million dollars, I didn't go to trial. It's people who fight murder charges that didn't have to pay a million dollars to their attorney. Like, I don't know, but it is what it is. I'm gonna deal with it. My team gonna deal with it. It's not really affecting my day-to-day -day life. The only thing that I'm bothered by is the fact that I'm having millions of dollars on hold because I gotta figure out which banks to take me because y'all didn't tell me that I would be debanked because of this. And I had no involvement in the case. Y'all knew I had no involvement in this case. Y'all know I don't do fraud. I never done fraud in my life. And I'm suffering from because I didn't tell them because I didn't snitch. That's the reason why I'm fighting this case because I didn't tell them. But it is what it is, man. And I wanted to just issue this public statement because I see it's going viral everywhere. And my fans, you know, I feel like they deserve a, a statement from me behind this because I'm not going to run off on a $230,000 bill. I already paid y'all a million dollars. And I didn't even know that y'all was about to issue this public lawsuit. And I'm innocent. <laughs> I didn't even do but it's all good. Now, judging from what Herbo said, basically he didn't have any knowledge of what the promoter was doing and he was just paying him to get certain things for the low. We know it's always that one person that tell y'all they can get things for the low, just pay them a certain price that's usually less than the actual price and then they get it done. However, like I said earlier, if that was in fact the case, when the feds came asking Herb if he had anything to do with the promoter or any communication with the promoter, he should have just been honest. At the end of the day, they're going to find out if you're lying or not anyway, but then also you got to think, why out of all people in the world are they asking me if I did X, Y, and Z? Obviously they know something. So instead of lying, your best bet is to keep it real and give your lawyer a better chance at a better defense. Now when it comes to the lawyer, Herb is saying that he feels he was being overcharged based on who he was, which I think he's right. $1 million for a fraud case where he himself is not even suspected as being the main guy doing the fraud is crazy. There's people catching bodies that ain't have to pay $1 million to have a lawyer. On top of that, he basically hired an attorney, which costed him around the same amount he's accused of being a part of taking. The alleged scheme netted around $1.5 million and he hired the attorney according to him for $1 million and now he has to pay an extra 200 plus thousand dollars is crazy now according to herbo it's basically due to the time spent in which he agreed to pay an hourly fee of up to 685 dollars for one attorney and 570 dollars for the other one keep in mind that this case went on for some years which mean it all added up so unfortunately he has to pay the price the worst thing about lawyers is aside from them being a little crooked well some of them Nobody knows the law better than them because they're lawyers. So that's the worst part of it all, man. So y'all heard it from G Herbal himself on what's going on concerning the lawsuit. 
y'all jump in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this don't forget to like comment share and subscribe hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content remember as long as you keep on watching i'm gonna keep on dropping and i'm out